Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna have a look on the compiling multiple source files. And if you haven't watched my video on working with GCC, then you can check out my video, how to work with GCC. The link will be given in the description or you can click on the top right corner of your screen. And if you don't know about how to work with command line, then you can check out my video on command line. The link will be given in the description or you can click on the top right corner of your screen. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, we're gonna have a look on why we need to work with multiple source files. What is the need? And compiling multiple source files to object files. How we can do this in GCC compiler. And linking multiple object files that we have compiled just. So let's start with the first. So to understand this, we will take an example of a game. Suppose we are creating a game in which we have an enemy. And this enemy will have some kind of behaviors. It will have a brain, which is called AI, artificial intelligence, and a motor controller that will control its motor. So each of these behaviors, enemy AI and the motor controller, all of these behaviors will have separate source files. We have source file for AI and for motor controller. The part of AI will be goes onto the AI script and the part of motor controller will be goes into the motor controller script. So this is the need of uh, separating the single source file into two source file or more because we want to have a modular program. That means we want to have separate systems. For example, the AI system will be handled by this AI script and the motors will be controlled by the motor controller script. Right. So this is the need of uh, having multiple source files. So apart from this, we have multiple advantages of having multiple source files in our project. So let's have a look on all of these advantages one by one. So the first advantage is the modularity. With the help of multiple modules or the source files, our project will be fully modular. Having separate modules for separate work or the separate systems is very good. They all will be easily understandable what they do and we can easily evolve our software for further development. And second advantage is maintenance. Our project will be well maintained. To understand this, let's say we have a bug in this source file, which is enemy AI. To fix this, we have to apply some changes into this enemy AI script and the motor controller script will be untouched. That means we already know where the bug must be. So this is the advantage of having multiple source file or modules or the separate systems. And note that meaning of modularity is not just limited to the multiple source files, but having separate functions is also called the modular programs because every block of code must be responsible for just one thing. So this is the concept of modularity. So we can say that having multiple source file leads to modularity of our program. Okay. So the third advantage is reduced compilation time. To understand this, let's say we have a bunch of source files in our project and after some times when we have created all these source file and uh, we have compiled all of this source file for the first time and now suppose that we are making changes into this source file and obviously we are making the changes again and again and we are compiling again and again. So the build system will compile only this recently updated source file, excluding all the source file in your project. So this will lead to just the compilation of this single source file, not the entire project files. So this is the big advantage of reduced compilation time. And now suppose that if all of these source file is merged into a single source file, what will happen? If we apply changes to a very, very little part, for example, in the middle, then the build system will compile your entire source file that means your entire project so which is a disaster so because of this reason we must have separate source file and now the fourth advantage is the reduced build size uh, when we call functions from other source files or the translation units this calling avoids the inlining of the functions. That means we are not copying the definition of all of these called functions into our single translation unit. So this will lead to reduced file size and the object size and the final build. So these are the few advantages of having multiple source files. When you will get more experience with large projects, then you will realize that multiple source files are very good thing. And also 
they will provide you much more flexibility in your projects. And also there's something called libraries and linking the libraries. All of these are accomplished with the help of multiple source files, having the separate systems and much more. Okay, now let's go ahead and understand the compiling multiple source files. So how we can compile multiple source files? So first of all, we will have to create multiple source files. So let's say we have source file this, this and this. We have three source files. And now we will compile all of these source files separately to their corresponding object files. And after this, we will have three object files. And now we will have to link all of these object files into a single executable. So this is the whole procedure of compiling and linking multiple source files and making a single executable. And as a reminder, these files are source files and these files are object files which are linked with the help of linker and we will get finally the executable. So this is much on the theoretical side. Now let's dive into the real code. First of all, I will create a source file in the C language src1.c and I will write just the entry point of our program in this source file. And then I will create a second source file named as src2.c in which I will write a function which will take a floating point number and it will return the square of that number. And now we will make use of this function into our src1.c source file. And I will create a local number variable of type float and I will take the input from the user and now I will print the number and the square of that number. I will call the get square function and at last we will have to write the signature of this function into our src1.c file. So let's write the signature of this function and note that we are not defining the definition of the function in the src1.c file but the definition goes into the src2.c file. And now let's we will have to compile all of these files which are src1.c and src2.c right so we have the two source files and we will have to compile both of these source files with the help of gcc compiler and if you don't know about the gcc compiler then you can check out my video the link will be given in the description or you can click on the top right corner of your screen and now i am compiling both of these files separately and now you can see that i have first object file and now i will compile the second source file and now you can see that i have the second object file and now the last step will be to link these object files to make our executable. Okay, now let's run this. Now you can see that our program is running successfully. And now let's enter the number 25. Now you can see that we have got the square of the number 625. So this is pretty much for this video. And in the next video, we will learn about header files. Thank you.